Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to run through the code that I used for creating tic-tac-toe using Pygame. I split this up over three sections, so in this first part I'm just going to look at initializing everything, the loading up all the modules, uh, creating a game loop and setting up a blank game grid. So this is more of a initialization phase. Alright, so uh, let's just start with importing the modules. Uh, there's not actually that many, so import Pygame and from pygame.locals import star and with those imported i'm going to initialize pygame so pygame.init all right so with the modules imported uh, i need to create a game loop so something that's going to uh, essentially run the game constantly and look for inputs uh, and user interactions i'm going to use a while loop for this and i'm going to give it a condition that is always true or starts off true and require some kind of input to change it to false. We're just going to call this run equals true and we'll say while run. So this essentially means that if I was to run this game now it would just get stuck in this loop because run is always true. There's no condition that's going to change that to false and that's what I need to add in first. I'm going to do that by adding event handlers. So I'll add a comment here, add event handlers and within Pygame, there's a function for events. So I will iterate through these and I'll say for event in Pygame dot, oops, event dot get. And whatever event it, it, uh, it registers, I'm now going to be able to process. And the main one I want to process to start with is when we click on the exit button on the window. I'm going to say if event dot type equals pygame.quit then this is my prompt that we want to end the game we want to quit and to do that all I need to do is set run to false and that's going to be enough to kick me out of this while loop and to finish everything off then we just need to say pygame.quit so that essentially is well the very basic structure I've imported the modules initialized pygame created the game loop with an exit option and quit by game. Uh, the next thing I want to do now is to actually set up a game window. To do this, I need to first define my window size. I'll say screen width equals 300 pixels and screen height I'm going to set to 300 pixels as well. Now with those defined, I can create an actual game window. So I assign this to a variable. It's going to be screen ooh, screen equals pygame dot display dot set underscore mode. And this is where I put in those screen width and screen height variables. And on top of that, I don't want this to come up as an untitled window. So I'm going to give it a name pygame dot display dot set underscore caption and I'll just call it tic-tac-toe. Alright so I should be able to test this. The only thing to add on here now is at the end of this I want to be able to actually display something. So I'm going to say pygame dot display dot update. Now what this function is actually going to do is anything that I do to the display, anything that I add on to it, uh, any background or images or anything like that, this is the function that's at the end going to run all those additions and it's going to actually display it. So I'm going to run this just to check if I've made any typos or not and there we go, it looks fine. It's created my window, it's given a name and there's nothing there at the moment but it works fine, I can click out and exit. Okay, so that's fine. The next thing I want to do then is to uh, actually create a game board. So I'm going to create a function for this and I'm going to call it define draw grid. This is going to be my game grid. So I want to start off with giving it a background color. So to do that, I'll define the color first. I'll say BG equals and these are going to be my RGB values 255, 255 and 200. And now I can simply say screen, which is the game window that I've uh, defined as my variable. So screen.fill, and I just give it the background color. 
Okay, so that's easy enough. Now to actually draw my grid lines, there's going to be two vertical and two horizontal lines, right? So rather than typing out draw line four times, I can just create a for loop. So for x in range uh, one to three, I'm going to say pygame dot draw line, and these are going to be my horizontal lines. So their x and y for both of these horizontal lines is going to be the same. Oh, sorry, the, the x start and end. It's going to start at 0x and then it's going to finish at the screen width. So for my starting point, I'll be able to define, or rather, before I define my starting positions, I need to define the uh, the screen that I'm going to print onto. So I'm going to say screen. Uh, I need to define the color, which I'll come and call up here. So grid is going to be 50, 50, 50. So I've set my grid color. I'm going to input that as my variable into this function. Uh, and now I can put in my X and Y start position for this line. So they're always going to start at 0X because they're going horizontally. And the Y is going to be X times 100. And for the end position, it's now going to go across the screen, so it's going to go to screen width and still x times 100. So that's my horizontal lines, and I can just copy that across for my vertical lines. Only difference is I flip these around. So now my x changes and my y begins at 0. And again, my x changes in multiples of 100, and my y ends at screen height this time. All right, so the function is now defined. All I need to do is call it. And I'm going to call it right at the start because I want this to be the first thing that's drawn onto my game window. Draw grid. And now just to check that everything is OK, I'll run this. And there we go. I've got my background color set and I've got my grid lines being generated. The only thing is they're a little bit thin, so I'd like to thicken those lines out a bit. I'm going to come up here and I have a section where I define some variables. Define variables. And I'm going to call this uh, line width equals 6. And now I can feed that variable into my draw line function. Uh, just at the end there, line width. And this one as well. If I run that again, there we go. So the lines are a lot thicker now. Uh, I think that looks much better. So I've got a visual indication now. However, I don't actually have anything within the code to correlate to any of this. So as far as uh, Python is concerned right now, all it's doing is producing this picture. It's not processing it in any way. Now I've got three rows and three columns. So I've got nine cells in total. I'm thinking maybe the easiest way to handle this is by creating a list of rows and then combining it into three. I'm going to show, first of all, what it is I'm going to try to accomplish, right? So the first row is going to be a bunch of zeros. And if I just copy this across three times, that's essentially my game board. So I can wrap this up within another list. So I'm going to have a list or three individual lists within a larger list. And that's going to allow me to pick whichever position I need as the game goes along and I add more event handlers to change these values to whatever has been put into that cell by the player. All right, so to set this up, uh, again, there's a little bit of iteration here, so I'm just going to use a for loop. We'll say for x in range 3. Uh, actually, first of all, I'm going to create an empty list. Uh, so that list is going to be called markers because that's where I'm going to store my... Uh, player markers essentially as they play through. For x in range 3, I'll begin by creating an individual row. This is going to be row equals uh, an initial list with just a zero in it multiplied by 3. Uh, what that's going to do is create a row list which will be my three zeros that I wanted. And once that's created, I want to take the markers list which is empty at the moment and append that newly created row. And when that finishes, I should have the table that, that I was showing earlier. 
So just to check that that's going to work OK, I'm going to print out markers and I'm going to test this code. There we go. So the grids come up just as before, but now you can see in my outputs here, I've got these rows that I was looking for. All right, so that's set up the game board. It's set up uh, markers, if you like an array, essentially, or a list of lists. So the next thing would be then to add more event handling into here. And what that's going to do is as I click into these positions, it's going to look for these clicks and it's going to determine which cell those clicks have happened in. And then it's going to go into this markers list and it's going to modify it accordingly. So that's how it's going to track what is going on with the game. OK, so uh, I'm not going to do it just now. That's for the next video. So I hope this was useful and hope you guys enjoyed and thanks for watching.